Hello and welcome back. I'm the Emperor and this is Star Trek Resurgence. We are here with the Otari and the Lydians and we're trying to figure out what happened in those Otari mines. Let's see. Let's see if we can't learn a thing or two. What is that? A fountain? Let's appreciate the water. Soothing. Yes. I agree. Can't to talk to, 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 to talk to this man then. Sidron. Commander, I'm glad you've chosen to side with the Hotari. I knew the Federation would see through the Elidians' baseless claims and protect the interests of my people. Even though the Hotari should have control of the mines, some of the Elidian claims are still valid. There you're wrong, but we can agree to disagree. I assume you were there the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmare was upon them. I'm curious why the Elidians haven't fought back. They have the ability to retake the mines anytime they want. Ability is one thing. Courage is another. The Elidians know any hostile action on their part will not end well. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship. <laughs> the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Elidians might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. I wouldn't say state of the art. But the Resolute is plenty capable and can hold its own against just about anything. Let's hope so. Because at the moment, it's the only thing preventing them from wiping us off the map. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. Hmm. Let us talk to more people who will then be called away. Commander Rydeck, I'm encouraged to see the Federation supporting my people. I'm afraid of what might happen without your help. If anyone deserves thanks, it's Ambassador Spock. No one is more invested in negotiating a peaceful settlement to this conflict than he is. I'm so glad. We need his help before the situation escalates further than it already has. It's been... very trying. I saw you speaking with Sidron, our national hero. I'm curious, what did he say? He seems to be of the opinion that negotiating for peace is a waste of time. Because force is the only blunt instrument he understands. He's a miner, not a diplomat. For the first time in our history, the Hutari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Galvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now, they have the Queen's ear. For better or worse. Depending on your perspective. I assume they've taken your place. I was one of the Queen's most trusted advisors. And I hope to prove myself worthy of being so again. Which is why you're here. My fear has been that the Elidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to. But it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe... The Lydians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. 
possible. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. I've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. What do you think it is? I've heard rumors it's some sort of ancient artifact, but I haven't seen it myself. How can we know? And another one being called away. <laughs> I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Sorry, I couldn't help but notice you were speaking with the Hotari this whole time. I figured in the interest of fairness, I should offer another perspective. Of course. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but these negotiations rely on the Federation's neutrality, as does any hope you might have for a supply of Dilithium in the future. So why you would choose to side with the Hotari escapes me. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no Dilithium trade. But clearly, you weren't aware. We are and will remain completely neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. As is ours. Of course, the question is, at what price? That is not a different perspective Major on anything. Major Sonic Special Attaché, Lydian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? You should know better than to believe everything you're told. Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. You just answered your own question. How do a group of miners do something that in theory can't be done? That's how. Harnessing the storm. But even if it's true, how does that even happen? <laughs> you tell me. Great question, but uh, I mean, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, you know, might be a horse. Report your findings to Cap Solano. I don't know where he is, though. Is he in there? Am I allowed to go in there? Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Elidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. Somewhat, maybe, possibly. We'll see.
Gravitational harmonics failing to resolve. Warp bubble stability degrading. Increase output to maximum. Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. That's <laughs> some high quality test. It is evident there. <laughs> that presently the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. The storm didn't stop us from leaving space dock and traveling here. But could it still be causing this interference with warp travel? We must follow sound investigatory principles. Do not let an assumed conclusion drive your analysis. Sometimes we need a little inspired thinking, Mr. Chovak. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship. Construct a clear picture of the phenomenon. Those are tiny probes. I'll prep a shuttle. Oh yay, we go out flying. I don't know why there's a ramp. But who am I to argue? I've never designed a starship myself outside of Starfield. setting up a waypoint at a distance roughly corresponding to the edge of our warp field. When we get there, I'll deploy the first probe. Diaz always looks so happy. Fly forward, fly backward, use to turn, Q to ascend, E to descend. How do I... How do I continue with the lesson? Okay. Oh, we actually go... Oh... We actually are going. Ooh. A and D to strafe. Commander Westbrook, the Resolute systems are calibrated to receive the probe's readings. We are standing by to reproduce the warp field collapse after the first probe is deployed. Thank you, Mr. Chovak. We'll be in position shortly. And, Mr. Diaz, do take care in piloting the shuttlecraft. Now is not the time to indulge in the human penchant for joyriding. I'm not joyriding nothing, Chobuck Mr. Chobak. isn't such a fun guy to work for, huh? Eh, I just don't take it personally. At least I try not to. That's a very mature answer. Shows a positive attitude on your part. Remind me of it when I start complaining to you about the ship's new first officer. I would like to turn the shuttle. You know, on its own axis. It's pulling a little bit to the side. This is far enough. Transporting the first probe into position. Those are much, much smaller than in the little simulation thing Westbrook here the first probe is deployed understood we are reading it we are about to replay the simulation <sighs> problem I just can't get a handle on her commander Rydeck she rejected my plan to use a deflector pulse against the storm surge but on the other, she did listen to my advice and use the whole polarity trick to get you through that excursion alive. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the new XO. I'm sure she's a fine officer, even if we don't see eye to eye. But she didn't go through what the rest of us did. You know that. And it's hard to figure out why she'd be the one Solano chose instead of, well, one of us. I've heard some good things. You should at least give her a chance. He's also very positive, so... We'll keep him positive. In three, two, one, mark. Oh, dang. Whoa. All right, that 
is definitely a problem with the fabric of space. We need to get another probe out there. Let's go, I'm ready. With two points of data, the resolute and the probe, we've managed to get an interference pattern. I'm setting a waypoint to a particularly strong area of interference. We'll deploy the second probe there. Sure. Oh. Pressing shift sadly doesn't Listen, make us go any faster. I'm going to give you a piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Make sure you're never just one thing. And don't get so focused on what's in front of your face that you lose sight of the big picture. Before Rydex showed up, the captain pulled me into his ready room and told me he didn't think I had the people skills to be first officer. <laughs> what a load of crap. I mean, if he'd said that about Chogon, sure. Well, if you're asking, I think you're a people person. After all, here we are, me, an enlisted officer, you, one of the senior staff, talking like old buddies. I should send Solano to talk to you. <laughs> Bring him on. I'm sure you can handle him. You've got potential. You're a capable engineer. You're good in the field. Keep up the good work. And who knows? A solid jack of all departments like you could be commander in chief of Starfleet one day. Hell, Admiral Jellico started as a shuttle pilot. And there are places to go in the enlisted ranks, too. You know, I'd be the best leader Starfleet ever had. Lower decks always have to fix all the problems command causes. <laughs> Maybe I just save everybody some steps. Well, don't forget about us little people when you're running things. Of course not. You gotta remember where you came from. Very cute. He liked that. Chip does weird stuff if it ain't correct. Like, it just keeps moving about by itself, more or less. Here. This is close enough. Stop the engines. Deploying the probe. I really love these little box shuttles. They're so cute. To Commander Chovak, we're ready for another sampling of data. Very good. Running the simulation again. Warp field collapse in three, two, one. On. There it is again. I saw it. It seems to be directional. Well, what about the scans? Anything? Here's the readings in relation to our local space. We've got the Resolute, Latari Prime, and the probes. All this interference is overloading the sensor buffers. We're gonna have to triangulate the sensors manually. Uh. Locate interference peaks. I mean. We got something. Okay. These markers indicate peaks in the gravimetric interference patterns. Ah, yes. Let's see if I can find some more. The gravimetric interference. Ah, it's all coming Hold from up. that moon. This is coming from the moon. A beam that blocks warp travel. Aimed right at us. Someone is doing this intentionally. I don't know how they're doing it. It's like nothing I've ever seen. We're under attack and we didn't even know it. We need to stop them. Unplug whatever it is they're hitting us with. Now, look here. The current readings of the ion storm. These concentrations. They line up with the interference pattern. The storm. And this beam, they're coming from the same place. Carter, I knew it. Whatever petty local conflict brought us here. It's just a small part of something much bigger. Presently, we don't have an explanation for how they're doing this. But one thing is clear. This is no fluke. Thank you, Mr. Westbrook. I want a full briefing when I'm back on board. Solano out. A targeted weapon that inhibits warp travel. Coming from the moon Tau. That would explain the difficulties my shuttle encountered. More importantly, the tenor of the Hotari during the negotiations. And here I thought the Elidians would be the problem. Coming to peace talks in a warship. This wasn't supposed to be so complicated. We're right to be worried. If they're targeting the Resolute and we can't go to warp, that effectively leaves us at their mercy. Which puts us in a rather 
difficult position. Especially if they have more tricks up their sleeve. Tylus, the Hotari representative, said she thought they found something in the mines. Galvin and Sidron brought it back to the palace, but they're keeping it under tight security. She's going to investigate it. I gave her my tricorder. I expect she'll contact us soon. You found an ally. Why would Tylus help us? Go behind her people's back? It's a fair question, considering. She's worried that her people are being dragged into something that isn't going to end well for them. She's trying to save them. Hmm. That may be true. She's certainly more likely to help than the other Hotari we've met. That raises another question. Specifically, what do the other Hotari have to gain in bringing us here, only to make this hostile maneuver against us? There must be some motivation. Unless they changed their minds between when they asked and when we got here. Given their indifference to the negotiations, and what we now know about this warp disrupting weapon, it's almost as if they want to start a war. And Sidron was convinced the only thing the Illidians respect is force. I would say he's right about that. But at least they know when to hold back. But that does not explain why they would turn their aggressions against us. I don't think the Illidians know what's really down on that moon either. Major Armentis said the revolt defied explanation. That the Hatari miners somehow harnessed the energy of the storm. Harnessed the energy of the storm? Doing that is beyond even our capabilities. So is a weapon that disrupts warp travel. There have been civilizations and entities, both past and present, far more technologically advanced than the Federation. The Illidians and Hotari don't fall into that category. But that is all the more reason to investigate further. I'm completely drawn right into this. This is a good story. This is a good Star Trek story. Call from Atari. Queen's advisor Tylus has asked to speak with you. Put her through. Galvin and Citron are still with the Queen. I've enlisted help to gain access to the room they have under guard. I don't have much time. I'm not supposed to leave my post. It's only for a moment. I so appreciate your help. She's gonna die for this, I isn't she? Something. I'm sending you a scan. Some sort of console. Got it. Tylus. If we needed to gain access to the mines on Tau, is that something you could help us with? I suppose it wouldn't be easy, but I have to go. Tylus. Can we reconnect? Sorry, Captain. We've lost all contact. Dang. We can only hope she escaped without harm. It's hard to tell. We have to help her. Send another shuttle. We're not maybe... doing anything yet. Not until we know more. Let's see the scan of whatever the hell that was. Tylus suspects this came from the mines on Tau. It appears to be of ancient yes, origin. Yes, clearly. The markings are unfamiliar. Ancient origin. Very good, Mr. Spock. When we get back to the residue, that this came from the mines, that it might be the key to how they got the upper hand against the Lydians. Then we have to go into the mines. The Federation would not allow that. We were, after all, sent here to be a neutral party in a peace negotiation. However, we could demonstrate that the Hotari have acted in bad faith. Which would enable us to investigate the mines on Tau with full justification. But of course, we would need conclusive proof before taking action. Otherwise, it could put us in a difficult position. Whatever this artifact is may be proof enough. At least to satisfy the Federation. Especially if we can show the Hotari are controlling the warp disruption. And targeting the Resolute. We may have a better understanding once we analyze the device. 
But a mission to the mines, covert or otherwise, is not out of the question. And I will handle the Federation. All right. Seems we're getting places now. That's that's pretty As good. As I was telling Carter, I want all the data I can get on this warp problem. And the negotiating team's shuttle has been recording data all the way back from Hotari. Even better than our probes. So pull the sensor and engine ISOs from the Melville when it sets down. We'll do. I'll join you and Chovak down in engineering to run another analysis after the briefing. I didn't like this warp problem when we thought it was some astronomical anomaly. And I like it a hell of a lot less now that we know someone is doing it to us. How does it work? What do we even do about it? What do you say we pull these chips and find out? Ah, yes, he's touching his nose. That means something good. Some damage on the way. That ionic interference scored the hull plating. Might be some micro welds. Let's try pulling together. All right. Yes. The Star Trek Three, Starfleet two, way. One. It won't budge. Gotta be the storm damage. We need to... Welcome back. Any excitement down on the surface? Excitement? No. Nothing like that. Hey, can you hand me the EJ-7 interlock? From the toolbox. She doesn't know what I it is. I don't know what that is. Not much use for one on a security detail, huh? Carter? Yeah, I'll get I it. I thought this was like a setup to figure out that she has been replaced by a doppelganger or something. Well, we don't know what it is either. <laughs> Or be professional. Okay. Not showing I'll off here. Pressure for you to couple the panel. Eh, eh, eh. Oh. Here, I'll help. There we go. <laughs> We've got this. Open up and say ah. Thanks for the hand. We have to get these isolinear chips down to engineering. No problem. You really know everything about these ships, don't you? The tools, the systems. Like a walking Starfleet technical manual. Well, I wouldn't say everything. Always be a little bit humble. I can see that. Why was Come that on, neutral? Start pulling chips. Okay. Huh? Uh. <laughs> all right. Let's pull all them chips. Let's see how long it takes us to. What? I dropped it. What is that? What's this? Some kind of crystal formation? Let's touch it. Oh. oh. Whoa. This substance is a quantized spin crystallization of hydrogen, carbon, and lithium. Of course that's what it's it is. It's emitting tetrametric pulses at an interval of 3.8422 seconds. Quantized crystallization isn't natural. I mean, it's only theoretical as a means to engineer matter on a subatomic level. What's it doing in there? Let's touch it. Wait. Regulation 364, subsection 9. What? Don't just randomly touch stuff. <laughs> subsection 9 orders that in the case of an unknown foreign substance infiltrating a sealed system, it will be placed in secure confinement before further examination. Retrieve a containment module. Don't you think we're more equipped to deal with whatever this is? Yeah, that is exactly no. how you know that before you're totally else, equipped to deal with it. Issue. 
You don't even know what this is. Which is why we need to study it. Once it's contained. Well, if it's not natural, then someone might have put it there. It could be a tracking device. Some kind of sabotage. Or even a bomb. Which is why we need to get it to the containment lab. Come on. I can't make an exception. Not even for you. I'm still going to report these crystals to Commander Westbrook when we send the shuttle data. And I will That's inform fun. my superiors. I'm taking this just as seriously as you are. Come on, let's let's but remain friends and professional. Disruption on the shuttle. Now these crystals. Maybe this situation is more than we can handle with just a science vessel. Ah, the resolute can do anything. Could trigger a distress call. Get Starfleet to send more ships. Or I could send a message to my old CO on the Adirondack. Get some combat-tested vessels. Miranda, you gotta be more careful. If someone hears that, they could think you're talking mutiny. I'm just trying to figure out how we can help. Oh man, it's getting tense in here. Okay, stand back. How do we even get that in there without touching it? Like, this doesn't fit under there. Oh, okay, you just... Of course, I mean... Get this Obviously. To the lab. We'll get it set up for you. I'll let you know when it's safely confined. Oh, we'll be there. Last thing you want is to study this down in main engineering and have it explode next to the warp core. Mm. Almost forgot. A oh, dang. Can't have that. This scar is going to have to For be second, important at some point. Hold on you. Yeah, let's keep pulling those like chips. Like she might have changed her mind. But I guess this whole situation has her spooked. Maybe she knows more than us? Or it's because this is all happening so fast? Yeah. There was something a little off about her. Like that talk about sending a distress call? That was pretty out there. She was probably just thinking out loud. I'm sure she'll come to her senses. This mission has enough complications stacking up. Now we'll get through it. You, me, and Miranda too. Something is afoot. Commander Rydeck was able to work behind the scenes during the negotiations and made contact with a representative from the Hotari delegation named Tylus. She mentioned an unusual artifact of unknown origin being held under tight security within the Hotari Palace, which she believes came from the mines on Tau. Now, this artifact might have a connection to the revolt, to the storm, and to the warp disruption we now know has been targeted at the Resolute. Commander Rydick, if you want to take it from here. Of course. Tylus managed to infiltrate the heavily guarded location within the palace and sent us these scans using my tricorder. It appears to be some sort of control panel, possibly connected to the warp disruption weapon originating on Tau. Of particular interest is this symbol, which we couldn't identify the origin of. The Federation database has records from a vast number of civilizations. If anyone from Starfleet has come across this before, the system should recognize it. Cross-referencing with Federation records. Displaying symbols from Federation database with a 90% probability of match or higher. Select a symbol to further analyze. Okay. This looks pretty similar, but it isn't. Yeah, there, there, there we go. That's the one. Ninety-nine point two percent match. I mean, that's fair that's enough. What is that? Corn Empire. So, what are we looking at? The design and composition indicate this is a glyph associated with the ancient Khan Empire. Their civilization collapsed over 600,000 years ago. 
but once spanned millions of systems with a population numbering in the trillions. Fascinating. The Takan were once the most advanced, most powerful civilization in the galaxy. Is it possible the Hotari found Takan technology? Yes. I wonder if they even know what they have. Our knowledge of the Takan is limited. I have only encountered passing references to them. We don't have the first idea what this is or what it means. And we have all of the Federation records available to us. Perhaps we should see what else the Federation records show. Computer, what is the last recorded discovery of other Takan artifacts? On Stardate 41386.4, the USS Enterprise D, under the command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard, discovered a Takan outpost in the Delphi Ardu system. According to the mission summary, an unbreakable energy draining field was deployed against the Enterprise and a Ferengi ship. The Enterprise was only able to escape after negotiating the release with an entity known as Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire. Unbreakable energy draining field. Was that not like the Starts first TNG sense. episode? What else is there? There's a lot here. Or Let's among the very first. Select the aspect you wish to learn more about. Let's learn about Ferengi because Ferengi are fun. <laughs> there appears to be some sort of restriction order from Starfleet. Computer, explain this restriction. A Starfleet directive similar to General Order 7 forbids entering the Delphi Ardu system or attempting to make contact with Portal 6-3. Starfleet doesn't throw up a no trespassing sign for just anybody. I suppose it makes sense considering what happened to the Enterprise D. The technology to capture and hold the Federation flagship would have to be unbelievably powerful. Computer, what else can you tell us about the energy draining field the Takan used? The Enterprise D was unable to break free on its own. The precise nature of the technology was never fully understood. Only that the crystalline technology used was beyond the comprehension of then current Starfleet science. The engineering team found a quantized spin crystal formation in the shuttle you took to Hotari. They registered tetrametric radiation coming from it. We have Takan technology on board right now? We might. I'll run a full analysis in the containment lab. Let's learn something about the Watcher. Someone from the Takan Empire is actually still around. Or at least was, 16 years ago. Computer, what other information do you have on Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire? The entity known as Portal 63 is of an unknown nature. A biped humanoid, he was unaware that the Takan Empire no longer existed at the time of the encounter. He was able to control the crystal-based technology of the Takan outpost through apparent telepathic means. It was by his choice that the Enterprise was released from the energy draining field after Commander William T. Riker of the Away team argued on behalf of both Starfleet and the Ferengi. Telepathic control of their technology. As I have said, they were the most advanced civilization in the galaxy. Relying on magic. What sort of planet is Delphi Ardu 4? Delphi Ardu 4 is an M class planet, a barren, rocky world with little to no vegetation and frequent ion storms. The giant crystals that grow there absorb energy, but it is not understood how they do so. The entire Delphi Ardu system, consisting of 11 planets, was considered completely uninhabited until the encounter with Portal 63. Frequent ion storms. That can't just be a coincidence. The Elidians should have crushed the revolt. But if the Hotari have Takan technology and can control it, I see why they're willing to negotiate peace. For all we know, this could be just the beginning. And we're up against something greater than we can imagine. This kind of power in Hotari hands, it could be dangerous for everyone. Agreed. Which is why we should find a way to neutralize it if we can. If it helps. We've been able to triangulate the source of the ionic interference and warp disruption to a specific mine on Tau. Engineering used the latest data from your shuttle to pinpoint its origin. There. <laughs> so we know where to look. <laughs> I can Google Maps We need pin. to know what's down there. What the Hotari are hiding. To better understand what we're up against. And to neutralize it if we can. Captain, embarking on a mission to the Hotari moon, would not be viewed favorably by either side. 
However, given the circumstances, we are entirely within our rights to defend ourselves. I just want to make sure this doesn't blow up in our faces. Which is why I'm thinking of sending Commander Rydek on a covert mission to Tau. Away from my injection stuff? Great. Assuming you're up to the task. That's not going to go wrong. It would require absolute secrecy. And obviously, it's not without risk. I'll get the away team in and out. They're in safe hands with me. Under normal circumstances, that would be the case. But given the sensitive nature of this incursion, I'm afraid you'll have to go it alone. I'm hoping Tylus can accompany you. The priority is to avoid detection. It's a calculated risk. The last thing we need is to get caught and then blamed for violating our neutrality. If Tylus is even still around, tense situation. we don't even know that. Can't afford any mistakes. Which is why I've chosen you. Tylus will be essential to my success. Not only her knowledge of the mines, but her ability to gain access. Particularly now that we know which mine we need to get into. Make sure she understands the need to keep this covert. She's not going to want her people to know about this. Get in touch with Tylus and make the necessary arrangements as discreetly as possible. Bridge to Captain Solano. The Olydians have moved additional ships to the edge of the Hotari system. Current heading is straight for the homeworld. Understood. It would seem we no longer have the luxury of waiting. In that case, may I suggest you and I return to Hotari Prime? Doing so will provide Commander Rydek as much time as possible to complete her mission. Agreed. We'll hail the Queen's delegation from my ready room. We all know what we need to do. Dismissed. Petty officers Diaz and Ed Salar, where is the crystal formation that you found in the shuttle? I have tasked Ensign Calloway with performing a full analysis of the tetrametric pulses. Security brought it to the containment lab. I was just there. They don't know anything about it. Oh, Security dang. Never checked it in. I knew oh, something I was them. up. She's the one that had the crystal formation? Yeah. Her and the rest of the security detail from the negotiations. Diaz, Tamaris. Carter Diaz to Miranda Maris. Uh oh no. Commander Westbrook to Petty Officer Miranda Maris. Respond. Something's not right. She's still on the ship. She has to be. Computer, locate Petty Officer Miranda Maris. Petty Officer Miranda Maris is in the isolinear storage array on deck five. I'll go find her. Good. How about we send the whole security detail? I'm sure Mr. Diaz can attend to this on his own. <laughs> Why you don't get me any help? See, this is the this is the base formula of every good Star Trek episode. There's an external conflict without an obvious resolution and an internal conflict without an obvious resolution. And all of them get resolved by the end of the episode with all the information presented during the episode. So this is the internal conflict. The external conflict is, of, of course, the larger picture. They are obviously related, but still, I mean, this this is this is good stuff. I like this. Examine the tower. It is a tower. She's not in there. Well done. Let's examine the server. Someone improperly pulled these isolinear chips. Got to be very linear about isolinear chips pulling. Ah, oh, dang, that's closed. Uh uh. Who did this? How about Miranda? Who's probably not Miranda at all. Let's go there silently. Check it out. No sound. Shh, quiet now. Don't post a comment or we're gonna be we're gonna be seen and heard.
W, 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 W. All right. Very quiet. Covert, even. Stealth check. 1D20 plus 3. Well, there's a wall of servers. That's not our way. Let's go this way. Oh no, more isolinear chips. What are you doing? What the? It's not her. Oh, it's just you. I'm busy right now. Why don't you come back later? What's the matter? Were you worried it was going to be someone else? No. I mean, I'm glad it's you. Oh, yeah. But I'm through here. So I can't stay in chat. I have other things to do. Sorry you came all this way for nothing. Hold on a second. Commander Westbrook said the crystal formation we found in the shuttle never made it to the containment lab. He sent me to find you. I don't know why he'd say that. I brought the crystals to the lab myself. Whatever he told you, he got it wrong. All I know is where I left them. If that's the case, let's both go down there and find them. It's that simple. I don't have time for that. I have work to do. Look, I appreciate that you came to check on me, but I'm fine. You worry too much. We're on a starship. Nothing's gonna happen to me here. I'm worried because you're acting strange. One minute you're citing regulation to take the crystals, and now you don't seem to care that they've gone missing. And what are you even doing in here? Will you drop it? I don't like being interrogated, Carter. <gasps> hey, wait up! The bump. I'm getting some very mixed signals from you right now. I'm sorry. I'm under a lot of stress right now. Just tell Chovak or whoever I don't know where the crystals are and let me go about my business. Yes. I know we have some things to figure out. I don't have time to stand around and debate with you. I don't know what it is, but you're hiding something. What's in that storage drive? It's... secure data. It doesn't concern you. Miranda, hold on! Oh no. No. Now the violence Get out happens. Of my way. <gasps> we were violated! You were taking so long, the commander sent us to see what the problem was. Diaz, you were sent here with specific orders, and fighting your crewmate wasn't one of them. What the hell is going on here? Let's just let them explain. Maybe. I'd like to hear that, because I know what it looks like. There's something seriously wrong with her. She's not herself, I'm telling you. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. Well, for one, she was copying data onto this. This drive is unauthorized. There are ISOs all over the floor. And that's why I was in here, investigating this situation. And when Carter came looking for me, we got our wires crossed. It wasn't anything more than that. Even if that was true, it still doesn't answer what happened to the crystal formation that she took. And she isn't helping. I can't tell you what I don't know. I brought them where they belonged, and that's where I left them. I don't know what's going on here, but I think we need to call it into security. She can explain herself in the brig. Hold on a minute. We don't need to put this on anyone's permanent record. Carter said you're not yourself. If something's wrong with you, we should head to sick bay, and the doc will fix you right up. Yeah, I... I haven't felt right since I came back from Hotari. I think I should see the doctor. You two know her? 
If you really think she's not well, we can take her to sick bay first. But what I know is this is a security breach, and we should treat it as such. Please, just let me go see the doctor. She did have a bumpy ride back on the shuttle. Come on, Carter. That's a hard choice. We should get her taken care of. You better be sure about this. No. Trust my intuition, my gut feeling here. This is Petty Officer Diaz. I need a security team to deck five. You can it's still you can still get medical treatment in the brig. Like I don't see what the problem is. You can you can you can get a doctor in there. Tensions are running high. This is good though. This is very Star Trek. I like this. What lies beneath? Oh look, there's some lichen on the walls. And with that, I think we're done for today. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, what do you think? What's going on here? Uh, speculate down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out the Discord. Maybe join the Twitch as well. We stream three times a week. Hope you had a good one. And see you on the next one. Until then, bye-bye.